Ha 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 ha! Oh, this looks wonderful, doesn't it? Beautiful. So, hello everybody, and what you just witnessed was me spawning what is about to be a fairy. Yes, you heard me correctly, guys. The fairy will spawn with a special ritual like that. The fairy will fly, cast healing spells, cast magic damage to other mobs and will cast an attack when triggered with a particular item, maybe an enchanted book of something. Uh, they will curse the player upon death, so if you are wanting to kill one of these things for its loot, then be warned for you will be cursed, and the only way to cure this will be to build an altar. So, how did I do all that? The answer lies in this very long command I will show you now. Execute at a Ty Pickles armor stand and then it detects for the block below it and if that's true then it will execute Ty Pickles at a armor stand detect for the Prismarine block that's nearby and if that's true then it will keep on executing and going and going and going until all of the requirements are met for this particular armor stand and then it will start adding a score to it. And that score is, when we get there, M Creature Fairy 1. So it will start adding that score there. So let's watch this in action. Uh, M Creature, oh, side, let, let's do it in the sidebar. M Creature Fairy 1. All right, let's just go to that. Okay, so. When we place down our armor stand on the diamond block, it removes it because we don't want the player exploiting the use of the diamond block. But you can see the score goes up, and even when it's not there, it continues to go up. And the reason why that is so is because I've added a command somewhere. Yep, right here. If it has a score of 21, 21 is where it stops being actually part of the structure. When it becomes that, then it will start adding to itself on its own. This command is how it rotates, so if it has a score of M Creature Fairy 1 and a minimum of 1, that will start ascending and rotating, so that's that command there. This command here is just making sure that it doesn't have gravity, so it doesn't keep falling back to the ground. This command here makes sure, is it makes sure that it dies once it reaches the point that it, you want it to reach. This one is just a particle command, this is another particle command, and this one is just filling the diamond block below with air. So, we have now done the spawning, so let's move on. So, how are we going to do the AI, you ask? Well, when it is within a certain radius of the player, then it will be an armor stand with the appearance of a fairy riding an invisible silent bat somewhere. And when the bat gets out of the certain radius of the player, then, it, then the bat will be teleported and killed instantly. And, the zomb and a zombie will spawn in its place, and the armor stand will spawn there instead. And once the zombie starts tracking the player, he'll do no damage by the way, the zombie will start tracking the player, like he is now, and when he gets within a certain radius, it will change back to a bat, and the fairy will fly around just as normal. So, I have put in a command for the mermaid. Yes, I did. And instead of an armor stand, I decided a baby zombie was more appropriate. A, because they have health, and B, because it's just a whole lot more easy to deal with. So, let's see what happens now. So it goes up, and hopefully it will only spawn one. If not, that is not what I was going for. Awesome. Here is our fairy. Now she's going to be floating beside the player as normal and I might make it so her AI activates. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with this. This is cool. Alright, so let's just... I'm sorry. I have to. I, w I would have got a curse for that if I programmed it. But I think the next thing we need to do is program her moving mechanics. Alright. Bat AI test one. Let's see how this goes. I'm hoping for the best. And... Oh, amazing. 
I just need to make the bat invisible, but oh wow, I am so happy with how this came out, actually. It looks a bit silly, actually, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. So, this is what she looks like now that the bat's invisible. Kind of crazy, but she'll look a bit more appropriate once the particles start flying. So I just made a quick modification to the teleport command, so things don't interfere each with each other. We are now ex executing in terms of the fairy, and it will only teleport to um, the bats. I've named them FY1 if they are within a radius of three. So let's just kill this person and summon in another fairy. Awesome, it seems to be working just fine. So let's see what happens if we summon in another fairy. Will they interfere terribly? What if they come within a radius of three blocks? Will they just become dysfunctional? Oh. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So maybe I should put r equals zero and see what happens here. Perfect. Now, can we get away with decreasing the radius to two? We certainly can. Can we get away with decreasing it to one, maybe? Oh, we can. Awesome. So if they collide with each other, then they'll be stuck together permanently. But the chances of two players having these guys and being right next to each other are pretty low. And then having them collide even. So let's kill these guys and let's move on to how they can walk towards the player if they get too far away. Alright, so I programmed it in, and if this works, then I will show you exactly how I programmed it. So, everything goes well. Now, what if you go too far away? Um, okay, so this radius is just a bit too small. We can bump it up to 4, for instance. Okay, let's... Let's just teleport the fairy straight to, um, I've called him FY2, let's just see what happens. Alright, so, if I'm in game mode 0, the fairy will follow me. And that is perfect, that's exactly what we want. Now I want to make it so, if the fairy gets close to us again, then it, she will turn back into a bat. So before I do that, let me just tell you how that switch was actually performed. So I'm going to do this one in Podzol, for instance. Alright, so first off, we are executing from the bat that's been summoned, and we execute to the nearest player, and if the bat is further away than 16 blocks, then it will summon a zombie with a custom name of FY2 with all of the speeds, the attack damage has zero, so nothing happens. Follow range is 100, invulnerable, persistence required, and silent, of course. And at the same time, it will kill, using the same command, only with a kill on the end, it will kill the bat. And this one is just to make sure that the fairy gets teleported to the zombie. So now we're going to do the same thing, but instead of using RM for maximum radius outside, or radius outside, we are just going to be using R. So, yeah, let's, let's do that. So if you're wondering what this thing looks like without the invisibility, here's what is going on. So, zombie tracks me, dies, summons a bat, and the, the fairy will follow that instead. Gets too far away, and zombie spawns, bat dies, comes closer, starts flying around as per normal again. I think this is a job well done for today. Thank you very much for watching. I do apologize for the lack of videos lately. I have been working on Lila's heart a lot. I'm trying to familiarize myself with World Painter and it is a pain. Haha. <laughs> you get it? Because Painter. Alright, so I have been also working on a loot randomization system, which is also a bit of a headache. 
but next time I think we should just work straight on to the first cave and see how we go or just work on the items. But for now, we are going to continue with this fairy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day.